In this experiment, I recreate the alcohol catalyzed magnesium reduction reaction to make sodium metal. In this reaction, two molecules of sodium hydroxide react with two molecules of magnesium via an alcohol catalyst, menthol in this case, in order to produce two molecules of magnesium oxide, two molecules of sodium metal, and a molecule of hydrogen. To start the experiment, I first measured out a bit more sodium hydroxide than I would need, and I set an oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I bake the sodium hydroxide and all the glassware I will be using in the oven for about half an hour to remove as much moisture as possible. This is because when the sodium forms, it will prefer to react with the water to become sodium hydroxide again. So in order for this reaction to proceed more quickly, I bake everything to get rid of as much water as possible. Next, I put some magnesium fire starter shavings in a blender and blended until a coarse powder was obtained. Please note that this is a potentially dangerous thing to do. If the magnesium ignites, it could be a bad time. It is a good idea to carefully proceed with this step and proceed cautiously with frequent pausing during blending. Previously, I attempted this experiment using the full magnesium shavings, however the shavings would get tangled up together and prevent the mixture from being stirred efficiently. Once these initial steps were undertaken, I was ready to begin the full experiment. For this experiment, this is the list of materials I used, listed here in case you want to see. First, I measured out 20 grams of the dried sodium hydroxide. 3.03 grams of menthol crystals, and approximately half a gram of sodium from an earlier run. This sodium can also be obtained using the Kastner process like shown here. Or don't do this as well, I didn't particularly like this method because it made my skin and lungs feel spicy from all the lye dust generated. Lithium metal from a lithium battery can also be used in its place. That is what I used on my first run. I then added 14 grams of the coarse magnesium shavings to a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer. On top of this, I then added the sodium hydroxide, the menthol, and the sodium. After that, I add 160 milliliters of mineral oil on top of all this. Then I set up my glassware to create an overhead stirring setup as shown here. I decided to use an overhead stirring setup instead of a stir bar because the first few times I tried this reaction, I used various stir bars. However, no matter what I tried, the stir bars would always demagnetize after an hour or two in the hot oil. First, I insert a PFA stirrer that has a foldable paddle into the Erlenmeyer. Then I put a 2440 Kleisen condenser over that, which I attach with a haphazardly made rubber stopper adapter. The aperture after the bend has another piece of glassware that I'm using as gas output to this reaction. It will lead to a tube that goes into a bubble trap. I cap off the straight end of the Kleisen condenser with a thermometer adapter which has a stirrer going through it instead of a thermometer. To stir the stirrer rod, I attach it to a 150 RPM planetary motor with a motor couple which is mounted in place with some clamps, and I drive it with a cheap power supply. I have also placed the Erlenmeyer in a 1000 milliliter beaker that has some sand to ensure proper heat dissipation. Additionally, a thermometer was also placed in the sand to track the temperature. Next, I turned on the heating and stirring. After about 10 to 20 minutes, the temperature had risen to about 50 degrees Celsius and bubbles had started to be produced at about a one bubble per second cadence. In this part of the reaction, the remaining moisture is probably reacting with the sodium to produce more sodium hydroxide. After about three hours, the sand bath had reached the target 200 degrees Celsius and the bubbles were a bit more vigorous. The reaction mixture had also started to turn into a gray slurry. At this point, I let the reaction go overnight. In the morning, after about 10 hours of reacting, the bubble trap had backflowed, indicating the reaction was complete. Upon inspecting the reaction mixture, it looked like there wasn't very much sodium and it was collected into a fine silt. Upon pouring this through a strainer, there weren't any noticeably large blobs of sodium I could find, 
So I'm going to cheat a little and cut to a previous run that was more successful, but I didn't really collect enough footage for. Look at all those sodium blobs. I then washed these off in oil and collected all the sodium blobs I could find into a separate beaker with mineral oil. I then placed the beaker on a hot plate and turned up the heat just enough to melt the sodium. I then added 1 to 2 grams of menthol to allow the sodium to coalesce into some larger blobs with some stirring. After this step, these were the sodium blobs I was left with in the previous run. Altogether, they weighed 11.11 grams, so subtracting the starting sodium comes out to about 10.61 grams, which is a 90% yield. However, there are probably a lot of impurities in this sodium, so the actual yield is probably a bit less. I'm not too sure why this run was less successful than my previous run, but I suspect either my previous run ran for a bit longer, or perhaps my run this time wasn't airtight enough, and this caused the menthol catalyst to escape. So if I were to redo this experiment, I would potentially use a better adapter than the current rubber stopper with a hole that I'm currently using. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.